This is also very very important to crack a deal, to interact with your superiors. These are the situations that you get to present yourself or, and your ideas. Be considerate of the participant's time. Communicate beforehand. When we say, okay, be considerate of the participant's time. When we say be considerate, it means be punctual. Value the person's time. It's important to keep the commitment. If in any situation there could be a delay in your arrival, call in advance and inform the person that you would be late. Communicate beforehand the objective of the meeting, the expected duration of the meeting. The expected duration of the meeting, informing the, uh, informing the expected duration of the meeting is very important. So that the person, when you exp uh, when you set expectation with the person that he would be there at your office for one hour, he is prepared to give his one hour to you. But if you tell him that you need ten minutes of your time and you extend it to half an hour, then the only productive time that he gives you is the first ten minutes. And after that, he is looking at his watch thinking when is this meeting going to get over. So set the right expectation with people when conducting a meeting. Items expected to be discussed. Keep all the items that need to be discussed handy and prepare the place in advance. After the meeting, thank each participant for their time and valuable inputs into the meeting. Distribute minutes of the meeting within 24 hours of the meeting. Now what is the minutes of the meeting? Minutes of the meetings are the details of each point that has been discussed in the meeting. Make a minutes of the meeting in time including all the points. Remember not to miss out on inf important information. And mail it across to each individual or each participant within 24 hours. A note of appreciation. Okay. Note of appreciation. It's very important just like the way we criticize people and it's easy to criti criticize people and give negative feedback. It is a little difficult in comparison to them to give appreciation. Remember to thank every individual who has contributed towards your success. Letter of recommendation, memos of recognition are certain ways in which you will be appreciated. Now always pass on credit and compliment to everyone who made a contribution to the effort. Speak well of your co-workers and always point out their accomplishments to an interested party. So ensure that you talk about your subordinates and your team members positively to others because you are representing your organization and he does not make impression about you. He makes an impression about the organization when you are interacting with him. Appearing to have taken the credit in superiors or customers eye is the surest way to spoil a relation with a co-worker. If you badmouth about a co-worker or a subordinate, not only does the client feel low about you, but it also spoils your relation with the co-worker. Beepers and cellular phones. Limit the use of beepers and cell phones and keep them on vibrate mode all the time. I have come across these situations where suddenly in the middle of work you hear jazzy ringtone in the office. It puts everybody off and it diverts our concentration from what we are doing to another. So refrain from putting your phone on ring when you are in the office. Always maintain it on vibration mode. Business meeting etiquette. Now we have spoken about business meeting 
let's see how we conduct ourselves in business meetings before the meeting start starting the meeting and after the meeting let's see how we should conduct ourselves before the meeting or what are the pre preparations that you would require before the meeting arrive early to check that the meeting room is set up properly put agendas in place provide for drinks and a light snack stand near the door and thank each person who arrives ask what issues are of particular interest to them introduce new members to existing members it is crucial that you it is important that you arrive the first for a meeting because you have to be there to welcome people when they come when the participants come next business meeting etiquette starting the meeting ask new members of the group to introduce themselves ask historical members to give their names and designations that is the correct way of introducing people so first of all you ask the new members to introduce their, themselves individually and then the previous the old employees would introduce themselves now preview the agenda and set a time limit for each item including time the at the end of the meeting to come back to issues which means that you have to set a time limit for all the points that has been discussed if you are expected to do certain things also define the time that you will take to finish that work and adhere to it now business meeting etiquette during the meeting ask a non contributing member if they would like to add their view points as we discussed in conference calls similarly try to include each one of the participants in the meeting and i'm sure you will i can assure you that you will get something valuable out of it and as the research shows that talkative members welcome comments and shy members value them being included by somebody else so remember this when you have a shy member in your meeting next time business meeting etiquette end ending the meeting while ending the me meeting remember to summarize the agreed upon actions it is like taking a confirmation that yes we did this and yeah we all agreed with to this agreed upon actions summarize the agreed upon actions responsibilities and timing later written as minutes of the meeting and distributed among relevant parties thank the group and guests for their time participation and contribution email etiquette the next important communication mode is email it is quick it's easy and it's and it's easily available make the subject line specific when you are sending an email ensure that you have added a subject line and the subject line talks exactly about what you have written in the mail for example if you're sending a report mention the name of the report in the mail uh, subject line for example if you are asking for something as simple as a leave write say leave approval in the subject line and write the body then do not forward messages with long pages of information if there are too long if it is a continuation mail then you might have to do that however if it is not a continuation mail and if it is irrelevant the other topics have now become irrelevant then refrain from including them start a new mail when replying to a question copy only the question into your email and then provide your response do not reply to that message 
if it is not important copy the details and then put your comments on it and send it back to them now do not send a bare message that only reads yes no etc there are certain situations when we do that yes no okay refrain from doing that i'm sure it doesn't take too much time for you to write one line now it's because it's too blunt and confuses the reader as to why you said yes what you said so just write a line for it now, address and sign they're very important now if you're using microsoft outlook you should configure a signature so which automatically sends it you need not keep typing your signature every time you're sending a mail because a signature is very very important you should put your name and underneath you should say which department you belong what is your designation which department you belong to and which company you represent next is don't type in all caps it is too intense and it is on the face and it sounds as if somebody is shouting if you send a mail in complete caps that's the impression that it leaves so this is still a written medium we understand that it's a written medium but in this as well you need to follow certain standards while writing guidelines as a professional courtesy interruptions it is advisable to avoid all sorts of interruptions that come from your side if of any group be it a group session meeting phone call or for that matter even if it is two people interacting with each other refrain from doing that in all circumstances but however if that's the only choice that is left with you and what you have in hand is really important then in that case always apologize if you must interrupt a conversation meeting or someone's concentration on a task quickly state what you need and show consideration for the fact that you are interrupting valuable work in progress so just imagine yourself in a situation where you are you have concentrated your concent you gathered your concentration and you've put it into one work and somebody suddenly comes and interrupts you with a loose conversation it is going to put you off the track and that is what you really don't want to do to people it is uh, it is inappropriate to interrupt anybody when they are concentrating in their work or when they are in a meeting yes when they are in a meeting we refrain from doing that because that's the culture that we have been brought into however when somebody is working we conveniently go and interrupt them so let's refrain from doing that and let's see how much productivity we can increase in our organization appearance your appearance talks volume being wrinkled unshaven smelly or unkempt communicates that you don't care enough about the situation the people or the company to present yourself respectfully it shows your lethargic attitude your laziness and your casual approach so if you do not value your organization if you do not value yourself nobody is going to value you so this is important point to remember dress appropriately and take care of the following we have discussed this point in the previous session it's important to avoid body odor use a deodorant use a perfume do not get, even if it is a classroom even if it is a meeting or even when you walk into your office or any social gathering ensure that you smell good because people will avoid coming near you if you have a body odor take care of your bad breath go to the dentist regularly brush your teeth twice this will take care of it automatically hair should be clean combed and tidy very important 
if it is too long, unmanageable, please tie them. Nails and hands should look clean and well cared for. Suitable makeup should be worn. This is for women. Do not over deck yourself. Perfumes used should be pleasant, not overpowering. Because why do we use a perfume? To smell good? Not to make people uncomfortable. How many times have we encountered the situation that we are probably in a lift and someone enters and that leaves you with a bad headache because the perfume that the other person wore was too loud. Now, first impressions are very important. We've discussed this in the beginning. So, since first impression is, has a lasting impression on another made for the most part within the first 10 seconds of a meeting. So display enthusiasm and greet the person and give a firm handshake with eye contact. Social events. Social events like business meals, you have to ensure that you follow the rules for the host you follow the rules for the guest and while you're ordering when you are a guest. We will see all these points in detail. How to successfully navigate a business meal. It can be really tricky because you can't be really casual and you can't be formal as well. So you need to maintain the balance between being formal and informal. Rules for the host. Don't impose invitations. Simply because you want to get a business deal or you want to get a promotion, do not pressurize your invitation on your superiors or your, on your client. Ask for a suitable time or a free time where he can spare time for you to come to a business meal with you. If is agreed. Request response as soon as possible. RSVP. You might have heard about this annotation, RSVP. It is becoming regular in the Indian culture as well. It's a French word which means respond if you please. When you send an invitation, make sure that you include an RSVP card with it, wherein the person fills in saying whether he will be attending or not attending, the time that he will be in at your place, etc, etc. Invite others for business reasons. If there is a business meal that you are conducting, you are hosting, then invite all other relevant people who would be able to contribute to that or for whom it could be beneficial. Select an appropriate setting. Select an appropriate place where you can host a business meal. Do not take people to a disco or a pub to discuss business. Take them to an appropriate uh, setting and discuss the needful. Arrive early to greet the guest. As always, the host should be at the venue first so that you are there to receive your guests. Ensure that you also adhere to this protocol. Now, rules for the guest. You have hosted your meal. Now it's you who has become a guest. Now let's see how you deal with the scenario. How, certain things that you will have to remember when you are a guest. As you expect people to respond to your invitation quickly, even they expect. So respond promptly to the invitation and give reasons for a negative response. So if you cannot make it for the event, ensure that you mention the reason as to why you are unable to attend the function or the event. Know where the event will take place and what rules apply there. So you adhere to the rules. 
like the code of dressing like whether gifts are accepted or not whether you can take a bouquet etc never arrive early when you have been invited always be a little late give time for the host to arrive and organize things for you follow the host to decide what to order we will deal with this in detail for the time being just remember that you should not be the first one to take the menu card and order thank the host say positive things about the host after you have completed your meal or when you are leaving say things that he or she would like to hear they have taken a lot of effort organizing the meal for you so ensure that they feel good about doing that ordering avoid awkward food because you are judged by the food that you order so refrain from ordering food which is do not order a sushi meal when you've taken indian friends or indian clients with you now do not order alcohol if it is against company policy if you will be driving after the meal because drinking and driving is illegal you don't want to drink if you don't want to drink do not drink do not drink because someone else expects you to drink it will be your sec if it will be your second drink don't drink because that's the business meal and let's keep it that way and while ordering follow the host let the host take the lead and then follow accordingly there are some dining etiquettes that will be that will come handy when you go for such business meals dining etiquette these are certain things which would definitely come handy when you are at a restaurant having your dinner or lunch with a client table settings are like road maps that guide you through the course of the meal so the starter spoon the knife it would be kept in the end so that will keep guide you as to how what when you need to eat so ensure that you pay attention to your cutlery or your silverware forks are placed to the left of the plate and knives or spoons are placed on the right side of the plate glasses or crystal stemware are to the right of the dinner plate knives and spoons are placed at the right side of the plate remember the etiquette rule solids to the left liquids to the right during the course of the meal you pick up the silverware pieces from the outside in towards your plate when posting a dinner don't forget your guests special dietary needs if there is someone who is a blood pressure patient ensure that you do not order stuff which has too much of salt content in it if you have a diabetic ensure that the dishes or the main course all the starters that you order do not contain sweets or carbohydrates in it do try a little of everything on your plate if you have been served try a little bit even if you do not like don't make faces and make the host feel miserable that you've not liked the meal so tr- taste everything a little bit at least whatever has been served on your plate do not make yourself stand out of place by saying that no i don't have this and i don't want this let them serve and taste a little and keep the rest away napkins are to remain on your lap until the completion of the meal now let's see for example you have been served you have your napkin on your lap and you get a call that you need to attend now you have to walk out of the restaurant properly and answer the call where would you keep the lap uh, where would you keep the napkin option 1 would you like would you leave it on the table 
or would you leave it on the chair? We will come back to it. Now, do compliment the hostess on the preparation, tastiness or presentation of the meal. And I am sure that if you have been to a place, everything cannot be messed up. There, would, there will be something which you liked and which has appealed to your interest. So make a note of that and take an effort to inform the host about it. They will definitely feel great about it. Now coming back to the point where you leave your napkin, the right answer is you should leave your napkin on the chair and not on the table. Table manners. Now it's very very important that we follow some table manners when we are in a social circle or during a business meal or even when we are at home. So certain protocols to be followed when we are in a business meal. Start eating only when the host or the guest is seated and has begun eating. So ensure that before you begin eating the meal that the host has started eating the meal. Eating the soup. This has been attracting a lot of attention. Most people have still not learned or have not understood how a soup is supposed to be had. It's very important that you take the spoon towards your mouth rather than you bending towards the bowl. Since it's a liquid drink, you, you feel that it may spill, so that's why you take yourself to the spoon. However, refrain doing that. Keep the spoon away from the bowl and have the soup. Do not slurp when you are having the soup from the spoon. It shows a very where it shows a very wrong impression about you and it can be really annoying. If your soup is too hot to eat, let it sit until it cools. Do not blow on it. It is next is it is best to order food that can be eaten with a knife and a fork. Finger foods can be messy and are best left for informal dining. Do not order alcoholic beverages. Do not smoke while dining out. Sit up straight at the table. It makes a good impression. Never chew with your mouth open or make loud noises when you eat. Observe the pace of eating of the others and conform to their pace. If someone eats really quick or people around you are eating really quick, you should also muck up. However, if you see people around you are eating slow, then slow down your pace as well. And try to fit into their pace. Cut one piece of the meat and eat rather than cutting up the meat all at once. You have been provided with a knife and a fork so ensure that you use both of them. Cut the meat and use the fork to have the meat. If food gets caught between your teeth and you can't remove it with your tongue the best thing to do is get up, go to the washroom where you have an access to a mirror and take out the food particle from your teeth. It is extremely unethical code of conduct. It is an extreme unethical code of conduct to dig your teeth when you are sitting on a dining table with people around you. You should not leave the table during the meal except in an emergency. The only time that you should get up is when you get up from meal is when you have received a very important phone call. Otherwise, avoid answering phone calls when you are on a business meal. Something that you need which cannot be reached easily. Something that you need which is on the table that cannot be reached easily, do not stretch yourself to get 
the item towards you. Ask for your neighbor to pass that dish to you. That is the proper way of getting the, the dish towards you. Do not dump food. Now if you have a bread in your hand, do not dip the bread in the bowl of curry. Take a serving into your plate and have it from your plate. Dropping down of silverware. You refrain from doing that. If you have dropped it, leave it there. Do not go and pick it up. Keep your mouth closed while you are chewing your food. You know what you, people around you know what you are eating so you need not let them know that you are eating. So close your mouth when you are chewing your food. When you have been invited by a host, start the meal only once the host has started the meal. When sitting at a banquet table, you may begin eating when two people to your left and two people towards your right are served. If you haven't been served but most of, your pe most of the people on the table have been, encourage others to start their meal. Food spillage off your plate. It shows your casual attitude, hence refrain from doing so. Be careful about the food and eat carefully so that you don't spill food all around your plate or spill a piece of your meat from the plate. Spitting. You should not spit when you are sitting with people around you. Refrain from doing so. Removing inedible from your mouth. A banquet table is definitely not the place where you, where you can remove food directly into, onto the table from your mouth. If you've got a bone in your mouth, take it out discreetly and put it on the side of the plate. Finger bowls. Make sure that you use the finger bowl appropriately. Call for a finger bowl after you have finished your meal. And after, only after washing your hand in the finger bowl should you use the napkin and wipe your hand. Do not blow your nose in the napkin. Cocktail party. Let's see how you sail through a cocktail party. Do some research on the guests attending the cocktail party. Once you've done a thorough research, it helps you establish rapport with your guests or with the attendees. It will also ensure you to initiate small talk. Gather certain information about their dislikes and the likes so that you know which are the topics that you can put forward. Refrain from using politics as a point of discussion, even if you feel that the person likes the topic. Determine what your goals are. Always before a business meal, define why you are organizing this meal and if there is an underlying reason why you are organizing this meal, ensure that you attain the goal. Whether you are a social or a business, whether the meeting is for, whether the meal is for social or business networking, keep in mind your goal and in attending this party. Do extend your hand and introduce yourself to unfamiliar guests. If you have not been introduced by the host to one, take the leverage, take the time, take the privilege of introducing yourself to the other person. Maintain eye contact during introduction and conversation. Circulate a little before you head to the bar or buffet table. Food and drink should not be the main goal that you are attending a party. So when we say circulate, meet a couple of people, get introduced, introduce yourself 
and then head towards the bar it should even if the person is not very close to you or you have tagged along with your husband or wife ensure that you socialize a little bit before heading towards the buffet don't get drunk when if you do that it spoils your relation and it spoils your image do keep conversation away from sex politics and religion keep drinks and food in your left hand your right hand will be free for the meeting greeting and departure if attending a cocktail party in a private home treat household staff with dignity and respect there are to be there are to be no personal or special requests from you to the staff sustain perception now all this that we have been doing we have done we have we start off with initial perceptions now we move on to sustain perception what are the sustain perceptions what are the sustained perceptions attitude integrity self discipline what is attitude be positive about everything at the work environment if you want to pass on a negative uh, feedback let it sound as if it is a constructive feedback and do that up to upright and diplomatically be positive towards your boss if you are given a responsibility take the responsibility responsibility positively do not keep complaining that you have lots of work however do not overload yourself with work as well and i am sure your boss will definitely understand what are the work that you are doing your peers how you treat your peers if if you see somebody is getting demotivated it's your responsibility to display positive attitude and bring up their morale customers while you during your interaction with the customers display an evenly enthusiastic and positive attitude that is what will help you build rapport and help in problem solving as soon as possible and retaining the loyalty of the customer the suppliers when while interacting with suppliers as well you need to maintain the correct attitude you need to negotiate correctly you need to negotiate properly however not be you should not sound too aggressive or too passive an assertive tone is a right tone to carry the company even when you are in the company feel that you comp- you working for yourself and not working for the company so it will help you be it will help you give your best integrity is about telling the truth set and setting the right expectation with people integrity should be one's core competency it is required at all walks of life even it is required in every organization that you join and every work that you undertake about setting the right expectation when you say when you say that you will be able to do it so you do it and if you cannot do a certain work do not overload yourself do not say that you will be able to do it and not keep your commitment so take only those work that you feel you will be able to finish it within the deadline self discipline to progress in any sector the most important thing is self discipline even if you master all the etiquettes and all the principles of success and you read different books on success however if you do not follow self discipline none of the rules are going to come handy self 
self-discipline is the most important ingredient and only once that is in place will you even try following the other principles that you have learnt in your life. So how, does, how can you maintain self-discipline? Making priorities and organizing time in terms of those priorities. Prioritizing your work is the most important thing. When you come to work on a regular basis, first thing that you should do is prioritize your work. What's the work that needs the most urgent attention? Write them down in that order and set timelines for each of those responsibilities and also aim at finishing the work in that given point in time. Avoid getting distracted from different noises or different distractions. Next is putting the important ahead of the easy. We always tend to prioritize our work on the basis of which takes less time or which is easier to complete. Rather than doing that, the best practice is to put the, per to put the point which is more urgent to the point which is more easy to complete. Providing solution to a client's problem. How can you provide solution to a client's problem? We need to follow a certain step. First thing first, you need to understand what his problem is. To understand what his problem is, you need to listen to him. And listening and hearing are different things, completely different things. Hearing is an ability which you cannot help. You will hear the noise, you will hear important things, you will hear everything that is going around you. But listening is a skill. It needs to be developed. So listening is exactly listening to the point which is important in a conversation. And hearing is an ability which you hear in either situation. Focus on the client's business benefits. It is crucial for you to understand what the client requires from you rather than what you want to do for the client. If you understand, if you listen properly and if you understand what the client wants, then you can work towards it. If you have certain queries, do not hesitate to ask questions. Ask questions to get clarity. There are two types of questions that you can use to get gather information. The first one is called an open-ended question and the second one is called a close-ended question. Now an open-ended question is where you ask questions wherein the customer or the client gets to talk as much as he wants on that topic. However, an open and close-ended question is where you limit his answer to two options, probably an yes or a no. Now, provide appropriate solution. Once you've heard and once you've, after you've analyzed the situation, now is the time to provide solution. Provide solution in an orderly manner. Explain to the customer or the client what you want, how, what you are doing and how it's going to help him so that he cooperates with you. So that's very important how you present your problem solving skills. Now, since now we have taken you through the entire session on business etiquette which involved how office protocols, dining etiquettes, table manners, meetings, telephone etiquettes, conference call etiquettes. Now it's the time for you to, for me to see if you have gathered anything from this session. Let's answer these questions and figure out what we have understood. Okay, social and business etiquettes can be tricky and making the right moves can make a big difference. So take this quiz and see how you fare in the following business situations. The answers are on the next page. Your boss, Ms. Jones, enters the room when you are meeting with an important client, Mr. Bill. You rise and say, Ms. Jones, I would like you to meet Mr. Bill, a client from San Diego. Is this introduction correct?
no this introduction is not correct introduce some more important person first you should address your client and say mr bill i would like you to meet our vice president of development ms jones second question you answer the phone for a peer who's available and ask who is calling please are you correct no you're not correct because that information is not going to help you in any which way if the peer is available it's your responsibility to transfer the call immediately rather than wasting the caller's time question number 3 you are entering a cab with an important client you position yourself so that the client is seated curbside is this correct yes your client steps out of the car and he or she would be on the curb side the side of the car which is towards the curb and therefore you won't have to deal with getting out in traffic or sliding across the seat you are invited to dinner in a private home when you take your napkin from the table and place it on your lap open it immediately wait for the host to take his napkin before taking yours wait for the oldest person at the table to take his wait for the acknowledged head of the table to take hers before taking yours the answers are b c and d just don't grab it first unless you are playing one of those roles so it's important for you to wait for the host to take the napkin the oldest person on the table to take the napkin and the acknowledged head of the table to take the napkin so today we have taken you through a complete session on business etiquette if you have any questions you can direct it to your facilitator thank you very much